Well, turning now to health news, as of October 2003, more than 33,000 North Carolinians had new sexually transmitted infections, or STIs, according to the State Department of Health and Human Services. But two very common STIs are not included in this total because, by law, they don't have to be reported, human papillomavirus and herpes simplex virus. Experts say more than half of those infected, men and women, are unaware of their disease and the effects it can have on their lives. Dr. Tom Linden reports in the first of a three-part series on sexually transmitted infections. Nine months before she married her husband, Roman, Amy Fletcher discovered she had human papillomavirus, or HPV, the virus that can lead to genital warts and is the primary cause of cervical cancer. When he first found out, he didn't get angry, he didn't get bothered by it, he didn't get disturbed or stop, me, stop him from wanting to marry me. You know, it was whatever, it just didn't matter. And the fact that it doesn't affect him is really a comfort. There's not a, a particular type of person or anything that gets stuff like this. It can be anyone. And you just have to, just have to deal with it the best way you can. Fletcher, now 22 years old, is one of millions of young Americans who get HPV infection every year, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. The CDC also reports that HPV and herpes simplex virus are two of the most common STIs in the U.S. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Peter Leone says condoms cannot always prevent their spread, and lack of symptoms in many cases makes people unaware they're infecting others. If you don't know that you have it, then you may not take steps to prevent transmission. So I think ignorance in a lot of ways has led to further transmission of these viral infections onto other partners. The CDC estimates as many as three of four Americans will become infected with HPV in their lifetimes and one in five adults will become infected with genital herpes. Um. Cancer researcher and UNC physician John Bogus studies how HPV can lead to cervical cancer in some women. HPV infection affects the skin of the genital tract, so it can infect the vagina and the mouth of the uterus called the cervix. There's a point where the skin changes to the glands that line the uterus, and this is where cervical cancer starts. Bogus says the cancer occurs because the virus inserts itself into the genetic code of the cells of the cervix. Think of these building blocks as the genetic code of the cell. When HPV infects a cell, it adds extra building blocks, which can lead to abnormal cell division, one of the hallmarks of cancer. To detect abnormal cells, doctors take a pap smear of the cervix. Baga says if you spot these cellular changes early, in many cases you can prevent cancer from developing. I think it's important to emphasize when talking about why a woman should get a pap smear that people understand that in the United States each year that half of the women who develop cervical cancer have never had a pap smear in their entire life and another 30 percent have not had a pap smear within the screening guidelines. So to emphasize the point of why they're effective, we can prevent it's estimated over 90% of cervical cancer just by getting a yearly pap smear. Unlike HPV infection, which can lead to cancer in some cases, herpes simplex is more irritating than life-threatening. Amy Fletcher's mother, Tina Jones, has had genital herpes for the last 20 years. Jones remembers feeling lost and confused when she first learned of her diagnosis. I did some research on my own. I think there was a television ad maybe late at night that says you call this number or write to this address and get information or maybe I found, I don't remember where, but I remember sending off for a booklet and it came in and it was not a lot of information but enough. Genital herpes symptoms include bumps or open sores, sometimes accompanied by itching or burning. To help control some symptoms associated with herpes, some doctors prescribe antiviral medications, although STI experts say the creams are of little benefit. For reasons not totally understood, experts say the risks of genital herpes include a three times greater chance of later getting HIV infection, the virus that causes AIDS. 
Additionally, a mother infected with genital herpes is at risk of passing herpes to her newborn during delivery. And in rare cases, that can lead to blindness or even death of the baby. Having lived with herpes infection since age 27, Jones now says she accepts that she'll have to deal with the infection for the rest of her life. It's part of my past, and it's part of my present, and it's part of my future. It's something you learn to live with. When she was younger, Jones struggled to find information about her infection. American Social Health, how may I direct your call, please? Today, more STI information is available from organizations like the American Social Health Association, based in Research Triangle Park. It is really more like the common cold of STDs, and the people need to be educated about it. They need to know when a treatment is appropriate and, make a, and have access to the treatment, and they need to know the minimum, at least, about preventing transmission to others. Charlie Ebel drew on his own experience of living with herpes and wrote a book on the topic. He says many people report they don't get a lot of support from their doctors, so support groups and anonymous hotlines can help. Oh man, you're going to do a good one. What is that? According to Tina and Amy, mother and daughter, the best support comes from family and friends. As Amy says, she feels loved, very, very loved and very comforted and know that She's better than most moms out there. She has a, a good reaction. Well, I think everybody needs someone, whether it's a relative, a friend, a doctor. I mean, some people have no one they feel comfortable talking to and they have to pay, a therapist or a counselor, someone they can see. And if, if you have something that you're carrying that around a burden by yourself, seek out someone, even if you have to pay a therapist to listen to you, you need to talk. I think you really need to get it out into the open somewhere. Hopefully everybody will have at least one friend they can talk to, even if it's a mom. For more information about resources related to HPV and herpes, including information about support groups and national hotlines, visit the North Carolina Now website at unctv.org slash ncnow. While you're at our website, you'll also have a chance to tell us what you think about a big issue facing public health officials, whether to offer testing for STIs in various school settings. Tomorrow, Dr. Linden looks at two common bacterial STIs that can lead to infertility in women.